It's no secret that Intel's 14th gen is pretty disappointing and tech right now is a bit meh, but hear me out guys. Every time we release a video with an Intel chipset motherboard, the most common comments that I see are in regards to not having an upgrade path and that the board only supports one generation of CPU or two generations or just that current one. But that's only true from a certain point of view. I think AMD with AM4 lulled us into a false sense of security. Let me explain, but before that, make sure you're subscribed. In 2016, AMD announced AM4 and said that they'd support the socket up until at least 2020, with their last AMD CPU being the Ryzen 5 5600X3D releasing in July, 2023. That is a bit of a tech anomaly and something that has never ever happened before. When AMD announced AM5 in 2022, they said it would support CPUs up until at least 2025. Here's the thing. The likelihood of AMD supporting AM5 beyond what they said is somewhat likely, but I wouldn't bet on it as being something set in stone, right? Companies change their mind all the time. Take Threadripper 3000, for instance, and TRX40, one socket, one generation, and zero upgrade path. For people like myself who use platforms like Threadripper, it was a bit disappointing. I've been rocking the same CPU and GPU in my editing PC since about 2020. These companies are not your friends, guys. They do what they want and they're businesses. They're designed to make money and gamers and PC enthusiasts are their smallest income stream. That's us, guys. We don't mean anything to these companies. Back to Intel. In 2021, Intel released Alder Lake with a brand new socket, LGA1700. Intel didn't really talk about how long they'd support it for, but the general rule of thumb with Intel is two generations and Intel will release a new CPU every year around October. So most sockets only get two years or two generations. AMD doesn't always do that though. They don't always release a new CPU every year, but it's kind of close enough to a year. So it feels like a year, if that makes sense. Now, this isn't an AMD versus Intel video. I just wanted to show you guys the pattern so you can better understand how long your PC will be current generation for. I wanna point out that Intel's now done three generations or really, let's say two and a half generations on the same socket with support from what we can tell is gonna go up to around 2024. And it's even looking like cooler mounting for the new Intel sockets coming in the future will use the same mount, so there is that. But Let's align the time so this makes a little bit more sense and a bit easier for you guys to understand. Intel released LGA1700 in 2021 with support up until at least 2024. AMD released AM5 in 2022 with support up until at least 2025. That's both the same amount of time. In that time, Intel has released nine chipsets with varying amounts of features, but ultimately they're not terrible. Where am I going with this? Okay. Recently, we asked you guys about types of content you want to see us do and a recurring theme that we're seeing from you guys with all of the feedback that you gave us last week is budget builds. Now, I wanted to make this video as a little bit of a springboard for that logic because choosing parts that are either one or two generations old can still deliver really good performance without breaking the bank from both Intel and AMD, right? This is why I said it's not AMD or Intel. I just wanted to explain the backstory. Now, I thought an interesting approach to all of this would to be you either buying a combination of new hardware and new hardware or used hardware and new hardware so you get the best of both worlds. I also wanted to mention that people don't upgrade their PCs every single year unless you're a diehard enthusiast with lots of disposable income. Something that you build now in the budget to mid range might last you three to four years without you even realizing it's been that long. And this is the feedback that we get from people as well. So we're, I'm basically just regurgitating what you guys have told us and my own patterns. And as I mentioned earlier, I've got access to almost anything you could ever want but my own personal PCs don't get upgraded that much. My personal editing PC is a Threadripper Pro 3000. That launched in 2020 and I built that in 2020 and I'm still using the same GPU from 2020 as well. I've had that same system for three years and it still does everything I needed to do and I don't really feel like I need to upgrade yet. 
Some other PCs that we use here in the studio are of the same age, like this studio PC that we do all of our monitor testing with is an 11th gen system. So, you know, there's varying degrees of when we upgrade things and when you need to upgrade. The main argument I see in the comments between people is the upgrade path between CPUs but most forget that there's lots of other things you can upgrade to squeeze some extra performance out of your system that doesn't involve you changing your motherboard every two years. There's no way to future-proof your CPU. That concept with how quickly the PC hardware evolves, you need to throw that idea out the window. It's never going to be future-proof. You just can't do it. The next part is, uh, I would say this is less advice, but more things to look for when buying new or used hardware. Where possible, for me personally, I like to only buy new because if something goes wrong, I know where I bought it from and I can take it back to the store or I could return it online. So I know where I bought it from and where it came from. Okay, let's look at some viable combinations of CPUs and motherboards because this is really what the crux of this video is about. Let's look at some stuff that's just not gonna suck for gaming. Now, again, this depends on the games that you play, but as a general idea, I just wanted to give you guys something to look out for. Also wanted to note that brand new AIM4 boards are becoming a little bit more scarce. Well, mainly X570 boards. B550 boards are in good supply as of filming this. If you're in Australia and you're looking for a B550 board, you can get them for around 170 Aussie dollars, which isn't too bad. And the price has kind of stayed around that mark for a while. In the US, if you're looking for a newish board or a brand new board, you're looking at about 100 US dollars to around 110 US dollars, somewhere in that range. The one thing I'm finding hard to find here in Australia at least is that brand new 5600X3D. I haven't seen it for sale anywhere even though it only just launched and I'd love to get my hands on it and play around with it but from what I can tell, the thing is a little beast. But yeah, I just can't see it anywhere. Also, good DDR4 memory is now at a decent price, so buying new memory isn't out of the question. Typically with budget PCs, I would usually recommend buying brand new memory because you can spend that money on used stuff in other parts if you're looking at building a budget PC. I think the secondhand market also might be a good place to start if you're buying CPUs, if you're open to not having warranty. The thing is with CPUs, guys, it's very rare that they'll fail. Now, if you're looking for an AMD CPU that I could recommend. There's a couple, the 5600X and 5700X. You could probably find those for decent prices secondhand. They're great CPUs. But if you wanna buy something new, the 5700X goes for around $300 Aussie dollars or even better, the Ryzen 5 5600 is going for around $200 Aussie dollars, which in the US can be had for around $130. That CPU is an absolute cracker and it's one of the best bank for buck CPUs you can buy new. I use a 5600 in our server because it's just so good and it uses no power and it just doesn't get hot. Also something worth mentioning is in fact LGA 1700 and I know like I said before people are gonna hate me for this but whatever you do have some great cheap options out there with Intel LGA 1700 systems. DDR5 is getting cheap enough now and sometimes it's on par or even cheaper than DDR4. This at least gets you into the game with DDR5 and if you're looking at upgrading years down the line, you've already got your memory sorted out. It might not be the fastest, but you'd have something as a jump off point. First of all, with motherboards and LGA 1700, you have a few options here, although they're not as cheap as AM4 stuff. A usable B760 motherboard will set you back around, I'm gonna say 170 to 200 Aussie dollars, or around about 150 US dollars. You can look on the secondhand market for a decent B660 board. That's something I would definitely recommend because B660 boards are actually pretty good and they're pretty performant for what they are. You can get those for around about 140 Aussie dollars or less if you look on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. But here's where it gets interesting. CPUs are, are, are pretty uh, unique in this price segment. You've got uh, quite a few options. If you're on a super duper type budget, you could look at the absolute cheapest viable option which would be something like the Intel Core i3-12100F here in Australia, brand new, that can be had for as little as 145 Aussie dollars. I've used one of these for testing before and it's not a terrible CPU at all. And if you wanna see a whole video focusing on this CPU and the type of performance you're looking at, let us know in the comments because it's something I have tested and I'm, 
I want to explore this with you guys a bit further. Another interesting CPU to consider is the 12400 or the 12400F. Both pack the same performance, but the 12400 has the integrated GPU. So if you're looking at doing things like video editing or video encoding when you're streaming, you can leverage the integrated GPU for those workloads. And for me personally, if I had to choose and I had a little bit more money to spend, I'd go for the one with the integrated GPU just for that. Now, if you've got a bit more cash than that to splash, another decent choice would be looking at maybe getting a KSQ CPU like the 12600K or 13600K, but depending on your budget and the titles you play, your PC could be moving a little bit into that diminishing returns kind of territory because over the 12400 or the 12400F, you might not be getting that much more performance. This video is kind of what to look out for and what a bit of the history is like with the progression of platforms and what those release cycles are looking like for motherboard platforms. The real question I have for you guys is, how often are you realistically upgrading your own PCs? I don't wanna know about your graphics card or anything. I just wanna know specifically about your motherboard, CPU, and RAM. For me personally, it's every three to four years for my gaming PC. Sometimes, if I'm really lucky, it's one to two years, but it's, it's hard to say for me personally because, you know, YouTube, anyway. There's a lot I didn't speak about here because I wanna open up the floor to you guys. This video is for you guys and it's about you guys. We wanna hear your thoughts on what your upgrade patterns look like and if you're new to building, what you're looking at and what your budget's like. I know pricing right now is terrible, but I feel like this is something we should all talk about together. And if you guys wanna see what else I talk about in regards to PC building and the state of tech right now, you can watch this video up here. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek.